Hi everyone, welcome, Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel, how are you? Today's video is all about continuing from last week's video, which is the plank effect detail. Um, if you haven't watched that video, feel free to go and watch it before this or after this. But what I was showing you was turning some wardrobe doors, flat wardrobe doors, into a featured wardrobe door with a plank effect. It's really, really simple. Just running a plunge saw along with it and with an extra long track um, to give you those saw cuts to make it look like planks, okay? Um, I'm gonna be showing you what I need to carry on and keep doing for this wardrobe. Um, this wardrobe has got a stall at the bottom, okay? And it's got the same effect, but this time we need to add a plinth detail in to continue and sort of give the illusion that it's continuing with the bottom of the wardrobe. So this is the front. This is the walkway through, so we've got an up and over going round. So this is another view. This is showing the stall, okay? So this is a little stall that will be removable. It's gonna have casters that swivel. But as you can see, the plank effect continues on the actual stall front. So we're gonna go in the workshop in a moment. I'm gonna show you this face that's already been done. I'm continuing that detail around the sides of the stall and the back, just to give that detail all the way around the stall so it's not plain. But what we need to take into account is the line across the bottom. We need to give the illusion that this stall plinth is lining up with the bottom of the doors. Our plinth um, that we do in a wardrobe is 60 mil high, so I'm allowing 10 mil, so this is gonna be 50 mil high from the bottom of the stall. And then we've got to continue these lines, okay? So that's what I'm doing inside. So once I have completed the stall and so all the plank effect is done, I'm gonna bring it into the spray room and I'm gonna give it a full blitz of white primer all the way around. Um, well worth staying to the end because you'll see the stall transform. Um, all the plank effects will get highlighted because of the spray. You'll also see me spraying it how I do that also. So yeah, well worth staying to the end to watch that little bit. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so we're in the workshop. Sean's just working away, and here we go. He, we've got the stall with the front already machined. Okay, so as you can see, the lines are slightly off; they're not parallel. And the reason for that is that we just had to work out um, those lines according to the wardrobe around it. So forget about that. But what we need to um, work out is this line here, and that's what we're going to be doing first. I'm going to continue it all the way around. So if I flip this over on its side, this is where we need to continue that line all the way across. And then after that, we're going to do the plank effect up to that line, okay? So I place my track on, and it's 51 mil from the bottom of the stool to the rubber. So I've made that parallel both sides. And I've just made sure that the rubber is in completely in line with the saw cut I've already done. Okay, so that is the most crucial part. We don't want those to be not in line. So I'm gonna connect up this CTS hose. I'm gonna set this up to 2.5 millish. That's what we set it up to. And then I'm gonna run that first pass. The reason we did that depth is because we were doing panelling on the doors. We didn't want to take out too much meat, sort of like three, four, five mil deep. Because ultimately it just takes the strength out of the doors. So we're gonna replicate that on this stall also. So setting up to 2.5 mil as close as we can to that. Okay, so that's one cut, that's the plinth. That's perfectly in line with the original front. So the next thing we need to do is divide that space up equally and then we'll just start um, the plank effect. So we're going for four planks here. I've taken the overall width, I've taken off three gaps and that equals to around nine mil. Then I divided by four and that's given me 140. So what we're doing is 140 from the edge. I've drawn that on with the pencil lines, one there, one there, we're gonna place the track on this side and then we're just gonna go for one cut and then we will measure from that cut and then on we go to the next one. Okay, so I've got the track on um, and we are gonna be starting from this end. So what I'm gonna do is gonna plunge in and just about start at that line and then I work my way across, okay? Ready for it? This 
the downside with this is that the curve of the blades it doesn't give you the full depth here okay so i was wondering what to do with this whether to chop out the chisel but i don't think there's any other way i can do this i think it should be fine it should give you that illusion um, that it is still planked effect once i've sprayed it it should be absolutely fine it's just the curve of the blade so i'm going to leave it like that and continue so all i'm going to do from this point on is measure 140 from the furthest point of that cut this side of the cut 140 track on and work my way two more and then it will be complete and what i do is i'll set up the tripod show you the rest and then show you the finished product So there you have it. Very, very simple way of giving the plank effect. Just got to divide it up equally, the spaces. So yeah, this was very similar to the doors that you can see here. We've got a whole batch of doors with the plank effect on the front. Um, but the difference between this was that we had to stop the plank in line with the faux um, pimp line. So yeah, I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna work my way around. I'm gonna do the back face and then the other side, and then I'll go around with the sandpaper taking the arises off, and um, it'll be ready for spraying. Right, so now I've got that all complete, gonna bring it into the spray room and give it a miss coat. Okay, so I've got it on here, I've got it on my turntable, all right, so we can spin it around, I can show you all the lines. So like I said before, this is the front because it's not equal, it's slightly to the left, all the lines. We carry around, then it becomes equal, two sides and the back, okay? So I'm going to blitz it with the white primer now. You'll be able to see all the lines even more so. I've got the gum ready. Let me go and turn the fans on. Uh, what tip have I got on? I've got a 410. So it's that will give you an 8-inch fan. Fine finish as well with a green tip. Yeah, I think we're just going to go for it. Spin it round. Maybe try the opposite way. Okay. Move it around. So this is the back. I want it to go in heavy because I want it to go into all the grooves. Any imperfections left, the primer will show. Like the end grain, that's, um, we've done a little fill. The end grain that will probably dry and then it will soak it up and then we'll see any more imperfections. So, um, yeah, I mean, I probably could just give the top a blast. Shall we give that a blast too? Okay. And there you go, you can see all the grooves. Can you see all the grooves a little bit better now? Yeah, nice. Perfect. I always put on a primer pretty heavy. I can take this off now. Um, yeah, and really, really simple and easy way to create that um, saw cut plank effect. So we went over the plinth first and then we just cut up to the plinth lines. Simple, there's a little pillow going in here. It's gonna get upholstered. We've got four cast wheels going underneath. And that is it, happy days. So once that dries, by tomorrow we'll give that rub down with P240, do two top coats, and job done. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, like and subscribe, we're at 34.3 thousand subscribers now. So if you do want to add to that, feel free to hit that subscribe button, like and share. But other than that, guys, have a great rest of the day. See you next Sunday at 9 a.m. Take it easy.